I'm Vincent, and welcome to Right of Way, a vlog about traffic, transport, and road safety. Today's episode is A Fault in Our Science, Part 2. Let's get started. Road signs and pavement markings are important in helping create a safe and efficient road system. When properly designed and placed, they can help reduce congestion, road crashes, and fatalities. They not only benefit motorists, but all road users, including commuters, pedestrians, and cyclists. That's why I'm dedicating a few episodes to road signs and pavement markings. Sa huling episode natin, ang pinag-usapan natin ay color at content ng signs, both of which are important to good design. Kung hindi nyo pa napapanood, ito yung link. From color and content, let's move on to another aspect of good road signs. Readability. Kung hindi nyo mabasa, wala siyang silbi, di ba? Maraming aspeto ang readability. Hindi lang kung nababasa ang sign, kasi ang tawag dyan ay legibility. Maraming signs ay legible. Ito, legible. Ito, legible. But the thing is, it's not only legibility we have to consider. We also have to remember that the motorist is moving and that her attention is focused on the things around her. The road ahead of her, the movement of adjacent cars, and that sometimes vehicles around her may even block her view of a sign. But assuming she sees and reads the sign, she then has to decide does it apply to her? And if it does, does she have time to respond? To shift lanes, perhaps? All of this has to happen in a matter of seconds. So readability isn't the same as legibility. Ang U.S. Department of Transportation ay meron na tinatawag na perception response time. This is defined as the time needed for detection, recognition, decision, and reaction. So the mere existence of a sign isn't sufficient to make it an effective sign. It has to give motorists time to detect, recognize, decide, and respond. Ang ibig sabihin nun, sa malayo pa lang, dapat may sign. Kasi hindi naman maganda yung biglang likod, di ba? Ayaw natin yan. Ang napansin ko sa mga signs sa Metro Manila ay kadalasan sa detection pa lang, medyo fail. Bibigyan ko kayo ng ilang mga halimbawa. Yung una, ito. Tell me if you can read it. No pausing, ha? Ayun, nabasa niyo ba? Let's rewind slowly. There. Now you see it? It's hiding behind some trees and it's even obstructed by the post of the street sign. Can you imagine someone not familiar with the area driving past the sign and trying to detect, recognize, decide, and react? At normal speed, you have just enough time to detect it. But that's only because I asked you to look for it. So sa una pa lang, detection, fail ka agad ang sign na to. Sobrang fail. Second, recognition. One of the recommendations the DPWH makes in its Road Signs and Pavement Markings Manual is that signs should be consistent. The reason is, motorists can then sight read the sign. If it looks familiar, then you don't actually need to read to understand. And as we discussed last time, symbols are always preferred over words. So instead of this sign, with seven words that need to be read, you can use a standard sign, like either of these two, which have no more than two words each. Third is decision and reaction. The sign is at the intersection itself. Assuming the sign isn't obstructed by the tree, a motorist traveling at a modest 40 kilometers per hour will have only a split second to decide and react once they've detected and recognized, or in this case, read the sign, leaving little time to decide and react. This sign should be placed at least 30 meters before the intersection so motorists can detect, recognize, decide, and take action. Yung pangalawa, ito. I'm traveling on C5 southbound in Bagong Ilog in Pasig. Let's assume a motorist is unfamiliar with the area and finds yourself on the left lane. As you'll notice, a barricade has appeared on the right, splitting the four lanes of traffic into two. So far, there is no sign, so a motorist unfamiliar with the area isn't sure where she's going. There, finally, the sign. 
Simple ang problema sa sign na to. Mali ang position niya. It appears after the road divides. What uses the sign now? It's too late if the motorist wanted to go to Pasig Boulevard. The sign should have been several hundred meters before the barricade to give the motorist time to get into the proper lane. Detection, recognition, decision, and reaction. A motorist must do all of these in order to properly respond to a sign. This requires that the signs be visible to the motorist it's intended for and placed well ahead of the decision point. For this episode, my recommendations to the MMDA and the DPWH, which are responsible for the overhead signs, are very simple. One, when considering sign placement, make sure they are positioned well ahead of the decision point so that the motorist has time to respond. And make sure it's detectable by the motorist it's intended for. Two, and I've said this before and I'll say it again, use symbols instead of words whenever possible because this extends the readability of signs. Three, be consistent in the use of signs so that just by sight, a motorist will understand its meaning. The DPWH says that a sign must command respect. Well, they'll command respect when they are concise, consistent, and clear. There's still so much to discuss about signs. Please join me in my next episode, the last in this series about signs, where I talk about pavement markings. This is Vincent. I'm out of here. Stay safe on the roads.